while the future demand will slightly slow down but still it maintains two digit growth rate talking about china commodity markets today with the shanghai metals market and jared for those not familiar, Shanghai Metals Market is the leading intelligence provider for the metals and mining industry value chain based out of China. So Jared, great to have you here. And the first time ever that we are actually talking to someone out of China about commodities in China. Nice to meet you guys. And uh, here is Jared and I'm um, from Shanghai Metals Market. And uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, we are a third party information provider focus on the mining and mining sectors. And me personally would be more focused on the uh, lithium battery, this kind of value chain from the very upstream like cobalt and the rising star, which is the lithium, to the refining sectors and battery materials, EVs and recyclings. So uh, personally, I'm tracking uh, this value chain and uh, we are focused on more often on the China market. So looking forward to bring the best China insights to the audience and uh, feel free to contact me and really nice to have the conversation here. And, and Jared, you've just come back from the China Auto Show. I envy you. It did look a bit more like a rock concert when Xiaomi, for example, presented their vehicle. I went to the Auto Show uh, yesterday and that was a phenomenon. I mean, the general key takeaways there would be that you can see that China is definitely playing a leading role regarding the EV sectors. You can, you can tell from the booths where the audience are gathering at. There are many of the EV brands. To give you an example that for the Xiaomi, which is definitely a superstar at the auto show that people has lined up for one hour to get into that booth. So you know how phenomenal that is. And I think Xiaomi serves a very specific case there in China. And just to add a little bit of context here, Jared, I mean, not everybody's heard of Xiaomi yet. It would be interesting to just get a little bit of context for those that have not yet heard about Xiaomi. Yeah, Xiaomi originally was more known as a um, smartphone or digital products provider. At the very beginning, they are aiming to provide some very cost-effective products for the Chinese consumers. And uh, they just plan to get into the EV sectors roughly three years ago. I mean, three years ago, they just announced that they are going to provide the EVs and boom, three years after they have their very first EV model called Xiaomi SU7. The outlook looks like Porsche and it's pure electric and uh, I would say cheap because compared to with other competitors, it's very cost effective. That compares to about $50,000 for the top model and uh, you were very uh, humble in saying cost efficient because it is pretty on par if you look at the different channels comparing it to the Porsche Taycan that has a price tag of $120,000 versus $50,000. So unless you're a big, huge Porsche fanboy, then uh, in China, you're probably going to go for the SU7. All right, shall we then perhaps transition from EVs into metals? What are the hot metals that are currently being traded on the Shanghai Exchange? And uh, where do you think the market will take us in the next couple of years? Yeah, uh, regarding the uh, metals, I would like to focus more on the lithium nickel and cobalt and I, I should elaborate more on the background the very thing we should focus on this metal is because that for the electric vehicles they use lithium batteries and for the lithium batteries generally for the EVs it's mainly composed of two types one type is called ternary or some people call it NMC the key characteristic of this kind of battery is that it contains nickel cobalt or manganese lithium these four very important energy metals and i believe ex-china or for the westerners uh, they are more likely to be a big fan of this type of batteries and another type is called the iron phosphate batteries which is also called like lfp batteries so for this kind of batteries it then contains uh, very valuable metals like nickel cobalt. It only contains like iron, phosphorus, and lithium. So, comparatively speaking, to make a summary, the ternary ones would have higher range of mileage and higher performance, while the LIP or iron phosphate one would have higher safety performance and also less costly. So, China is a big fan for the LP one, by the way, while Westerners may be for the Turner battery. And back to our topic regarding the Bentos, I would say in the back to the 2022 to 2023, that serves the very period that the Bentos price drives crazy. To give you guys an example that for the lithium price, which is both used in the Turner ones and the LP ones, 
It's all you see lithium. For example, in the year of 2022 to 2023, the lithium price has increased by five to six folds than it used to be. It's so crazy that it even impacts the downstream product. I mean, consumers sometimes back then has to pay some money for the lithium increase. And likewise, for the nickel, nickel it's usually provided by the Indonesia or Southeast Asia. And back then, uh, nickel was more regarded as a mantle for the traditional industries like stainless steel. But driven by the eternal batteries, it also has increase a lot back to 2021 to 2022. That's something has happened driven by the downstream demand. While entering into 2023 and now 2024, we have seen many projects has been coming online. And for our listeners, the, the big question here, Jared, is are lithium prices going to bounce back? How is supply and demand going to balance out? And you brought some nice, interesting charts here along global lithium battery demand right up to 2026. And uh, what are we looking at here? Yeah, here is the logic. Firstly, look at the uh, downstream demand. And for the downstream demand, we look at the lithium batteries, like I mentioned. For example, the last part will be the demand from the downstream. And you can see that driven by the EVs, which account for 75% in 2022. And in 2026, it still accounts for nearly 70%. I mean, that's the most growth driver for the lithium batteries. And if you look have the lithium battery type, I would definitely say the uh, turning one, which is NCM, and also the LFP still accounts for the majority of the lithium batteries. But also, you can see that the annual growth rate is 35% if you focus in the long term. So the conclusion here is that driven by the lithium batteries, the future demand is still very high growing and especially driven by the EV sectors. Yeah, I mean, very interesting uh, to compare 2022 to 26. That's about a triple in overall market size uh, with every segment growing. Energy storage, of course, growing um, more, even more than, than EVs, at least in percentage terms. But EVs, of course, still being uh, the absolute largest demand side. And then we have also their nice chart on chemistry. So uh, obviously what we are seeing there, LFP growing exponentially, taking a larger market share here and uh, NMC also growing in absolute numbers and all the other form factors not being uh, that relevant in the market, I guess. Definitely, especially in the past two years, like I mentioned, the demand was growing like a racket. And uh, while the future demand will slightly slow down, but still it maintains two digit growth rate. Definitely that will drive the demand for the battery mantles, like I mentioned. Lithium. Talking about supply, what are we looking at here, Jared? Yeah, after we have looked at demand, we should look at the perspective of supply. And here is the lithium raw material supply annually. And if you look at 2021 to 2022, the number is relatively small and the, the growth rate actually is high, but uh, not very much. But if you compare it like the supply from 2023 to 2021, it's only just two years has passed, but you can see that from the supply side, the volume almost doubles. So that gives you a hint that in 2022 or 2023, the supply although it's gross, but it didn't match the speed of the demand side. So that would be a supply shortage. So that's lead to the insane supply increase. And uh, looking the, into the future, I still definitely the supply will grow steadily driven by the downstream demand. While the other takeaway here is that if you look at from different countries, you can see that in the future, the supply regionally will be more diverse. Traditionally, it's be, be Australia definitely. Australia, they have a hard raw called spodrome, and uh, that used to be a very dominant raw material for the uh, lithium. And China, not uh, very famous for this supply of the raw material called the lipidolite which is also a hard rock. And also Chile and South America countries like Chile and uh, Argentina, and they have uh, very rich brine resources. So they used to be these three regions representing three very important raw material, which is looking into the future, we can see that the regional the supply will be more diverse. You can see countries like Canada and other like African countries, like even in the Europe, we have seen some hard rocks projects. So that's due to the very fact that the countries, they want to 
distribute the local supply chain to ensure this supply security. So we have seen many projects locally in many other regions. So that's the key takeaway here. And if you look at from different type and definitely the key takeaway here is that besides the traditional natural or primary resources like spodumene, like pellite or brand, we have seen some secondary or recycling raw materials, which is from the used or battery scraps to recycle the metals from them. And this shield will definitely play a more and more important role. And we have seen from some regulations like from uh, European battery regulations that certain share of the recycled lithium has to be used in the lithium batteries. Yeah, great summary, Jared. And we've talked about supply, we've talked about demand. What about price levels? You've also got a nice chart here for us of what you expect uh, to happen with lithium prices over the years coming up to 2026. Yeah, uh, and I think this slide shows the supply demand, the very methodology that we focus the future price. And you can see like in 2021 and in 2022, generally speaking, that would be supply shortage. While entering 2023, there generally will be the supply surplus. So currently the price in China, we do price reporting by the way, um, for example, lithium carbon price would be 100 thousand RMB um, per ton of lithium carbonate. And uh, when we focus in the future, we think that the lithium price range would roughly set at 100 thousand RMB to 150 thousand RMB this range. And comparatively speaking, we see more stabilized price forecast in the future because we have seen a more rational investment in the sector and the more supply coming into the market. And we strongly believe that the price will be in 100 to 150,000, this kind of range. But we do not exclude that due to some rising the cost, due to some geopolitical issue, the price may increase to some level unexpected. So Jared, is it fair to say, given the surplus in lithium supply here, that we are not going to see the extreme price levels that we had in, in 2021, for example? Yeah, we are relatively confident to say that the price was unlikely to back to something insane which is happening in 2022 to 2023. So quick summary from my side, I suppose we uh, looked at the supply side. We saw that the, the supply side is increasing rapidly. The chart that Jared showed us, the demand side is also increasing rapidly. And when you overlay those together, we get to this current slide where you see the supply and demand and dynamics. And that leads to Jared's uh, expectation of 100,000 to 150,000 RMB per ton of lithium carbonate price expectation in the future. Very interesting, Jared. Thank you for your information and thank you for your time. Yeah, and I hope more ex China voices because what China is currently doing is definitely can serve as a reference for the futures and um, we are aiming to bring the best China's insights to the world and uh, hopefully we could offer some help and uh, please feel free to let me know if you have more questions.